Hello everyone, welcome back to JD Mods, and we are going to be continuing with the third episode of the manual 1UZ LS400 conversion. And in today's episode, we are going to be working on pre preparing the manual transmission to go in Ali's car. As you saw in the past video, we put all the clutch and flywheel onto the motor, and I've also done the starter modifications, the input bearing modifications, and everything on the motor is done. So now we get to work on the starter and refresh it using the things you see down here below. So what we're going to be doing in today's video, a couple things, just regular transmission maintenance. We're going to be installing the extended throw out bearing. We're going to be reinstalling the shift fork and we're going to be doing a new rear input shaft seal, input seal, whatever they're called. And we're also going to be doing the necessary modifications to the transmission itself before it goes in the Lexus. So first, why don't we start to make sure our transmission at least doesn't have any broken gears. This is a kind of fun test as well if you've never played with a manual transmission before. So hopefully you have a shifter and it's installed. So here you can see I'm wiggling it around a lot, which means it is a neutral, of course. So take your hand and physically spin the input input shaft, and you will notice that the rear tail piece is not spinning at all. It does if there's zero load, but once I hold on to it, it stops spinning. Now go ahead and put the transmission into first gear, and you can see when I spin it, I can barely hold on to it because it wants to start spinning. And you can see the speed at which it's spinning at. And then as I change it into second gear, it'll start to spin faster with the same revolutions of my hand. And it'll continue to spin faster for third, fourth, and fifth, of course, it spins the fastest for highway speeds. Now it's kind of hard to put into reverse on the ground, but I'll try my best. Nope, that should be it. As you can see now, it spins very slowly in the opposite direction. So now I know that all five of my gears and reverse work, which is a great sign. And also basic transmission inspection. You want to look at your input shaft and make sure it doesn't have a lot of lateral play in all directions. You wanna make sure it spins relatively freely make sure that all the seals look decent. You can see that mine's a little bit greasy, but that's not terrible. There's no visible cracks on the bell housing. The mating surface is nice and flat. Um, pretty much everything I need for the transmission. I don't really care for too many of the sensors. I haven't done too much research about that yet. But this lets me know that I have a good working transmission that we can now start modifying for the build. Now to give the transmission a quick cleanup, there's two things I like to do. First off, I have some of this Scotch-Brite. This is the green stuff, but the red stuff works better arguably. And I like to use this to remove all the rust if it's been sitting for a while off of the input shaft, the throw-out bearing collar, and the little pivot ball for the clutch fork. And I've already done this a lot off camera, so I won't do it again but I just wanted to show you that that is what I do. And then when that's done, I like to re-grease all those components using some high temperature grease. And since I did just wipe some off doing a demonstration, I'll show you again. Just put, put it on and it should be a very light coat. This is just to make sure everything goes together smoothly and operates perfectly. Also put some grease, of course, on the little shift ball. That's the pivot ball for your shift fork which we are gonna go ahead and install right now. I've never installed one of these on a Nissan transmission, but they're pretty much all the same. You can see the retaining clips, I believe. Sorry, sorry. You can see the retaining clips in there and the little groove that the ball sits into. So, pretty much just put it from the inside out, line up the ball, and push it on. It'll be stupid wiggly until you get your throw bearing on there, but that's all we need for now. 
While we're at this end of the transmission, let's install the throw out bearing. Of course, this is the one that is specific for the 1UZ swap. You can see the difference between it and a stock 240SX one. It is about a couple inches longer. As you can see, there was an extension piece welded on and this will allow you to fully engage your pressure plate, whereas this one would probably not engage it enough to let you shift. So we're gonna obviously inspect it even though I know it's gonna be perfect since it's brand new. You wanna make sure the bearing doesn't make any noise or have any lateral play. As you can see, this bearing here has a bit of wiggle and you can hear it too. Maybe you can't, but I can. And of course, it's yucky and rusty. Now the one thing we might have to carry over is that little retaining clip. I'm not too sure 100%. But before installing, make sure to do a little bit of grease on the inside here as well, as well as just a little bit all over the place to make sure it's all good. Not on the mating surface, sorry. There's no need to put grease there, but just on the inside right here and maybe a little bit where it comes in contact with the shift fork. I'm gonna go ahead and install this off camera because I know it's gonna be a nightmare to try and show you guys how it goes on. So I decided I will show you guys how to install this retaining clip. So with the throw, throw it bearing just as you see here, get your clip and put the bump up and then it pretty much just goes in the groove. I'm assuming it's the one furthest down on the adapter and then you pretty much just line up the little bulbs just right over top of the teeth, just like that. So there's the groove fully installed, the little retaining piece and now let's go ahead and put it on the transmission. There is the release bearing fully installed. As you saw, what I had to do was take the fork back out and kind of put it in as you put in the bearing. Um, you'll understand when you have it because it'll all just work. As you see, if I push on the fork, it pushes out on the release bearing. And if I pull on the fork, it pulls it back. And of course, in reality, your pressure plate will push back on it as well. So just make sure it slides nicely on that shaft. Mine didn't right away, so that, that's why I used the scotch right in the lubrication. Now I know it's gonna work perfect, and my transmission should work very nicely. Now I didn't show this step on camera, but I did replace the rear output shaft seal. Um, there's lots of tutorials online how to do that. Just make sure you don't push it in too far and make sure it's nice and square. Now I know I won't be leaking any transmission fluid. So there is one more thing to be done to the transmission before we install it, but to take a quick break from the LS400, take a look at the GS300, or the Aristo, as I always refer to it as. My birthday just passed and Ali picked me up this sweet car cover. It even has little Little sticky outy parts for your mirrors and reflective tape just in case no one can see it. And now the Aristo can stay perfectly clean during the winter when I'm not working on it. When I do have to work on it, I'll just take it off, fix her up, and recover it back up to keep the paint in as good as condition as possible. Alright, back to the LS. Okay, so with the kit, I did get a little bit of instructions. It is just one little page and I've been working through it. It's all pretty straightforward stuff and I have already covered it in my video series. And the last thing we're missing to do is step number three. Or no, step number two. We need to shave a small notch out of the top of the bell housing for the starter gear to recess into. So basically on your engine, the starter gear pops out, spins your flywheel, and then recedes back into your starter. And the problem is, is that the 240 starter used to be over here, so there's lots of space for it to pop into. But on our car, it's now at the top, right at 12 o'clock. So it'll pop out and probably hit some of this metal right here. I haven't checked out exactly where it'll hit, but I'm gonna go underneath the car and measure from the center of the pilot bearing up and measure where the starter is and then I'll draw on the transmission with marker then we'll take a grinder and grind it out and if it works for me then you know exactly where to grind. Okay so I took my measurement under the car and I measured 18 centimeters approximately from the center to the top of the starter 
and you can't really see it now because I actually already colored it in. You can kind of see with my hand behind it. But these two flanges right here, those two right there, uh, they come down a little bit. So I'm going to use both a grinder and potentially, if I'm feeling really desperate, I'm going to use a little end mill shoved into a drill to hog out the metal. And I'm going to go in about half an inch, three-eighths of an inch inwards and just shave off all that material to make it about the same thickness as this part over here. And I will show you the final result. So there's what I've ground off right there. It's not super deep, not as deep as I thought, but I pretty much matched the distance that I measured. I am not very confident that that is exactly what I was supposed to do, but I think all I can do now is test it out and see if it cranks over. And if it doesn't, I will unfortunately have to take it all back apart and grind where it hit. That leaves the last step for this video, which is to bolt up the transmission to the motor. And I'm going to be doing that using a bunch of M10 by 1.5 bolts. I wasn't 100% sure on the length, so all I did was measure my bell housing and add about 10 to 15 millimeters for the adapter plate. And I also bought a bunch of washers as well. So I'm going to go ahead and try and line it up under the car off camera and then push it on and put at least a few bolts in and then crank it and see if our notching was enough. So for you this will take about two, three seconds, but for me I'll see you in a couple hours. So there's the transmission bolted to the engine. I only have a few bolts in there right now. It took me about an hour to wrestle it in there. It wasn't super easy. I pretty much had to clock it at about a 45 degree angle because of the starter bulge push it onto the pilot bearing and then twist it after it was centered. Uh, the back end right now is just being held up by a jack. And now what we're going to do is test it by cranking it over without any fuel. I removed the fuel fuse from the fuse box. Ours is under the headlight but yours would be right over here somewhere. And now what we can do after we trick trick it to think it's in the park or neutral safety switch we can crank it to make sure that that plunger doesn't hit the transmission and that everything is good so that we don't have to take it back out and do more grinding i apologize as this is kind of hard to see but on your transmission there should be a plug that looks like this one here and there's two wires you have to solder together but for now i just use paper clips to jump them there's the two big ones on the top center. They get jumped together. That's pretty much power and ground, I believe. And then you have to jump the signal wire to either the neutral or park. I've done neutral for now. And to do that, it is the far right plug, one looking at it from this angle, and the second from the left. So when you do that, let's push that back down there now. The automatic ECU thinks it's in neutral or park, which are the only two modes it can be in to crank your car over. It could not be in reverse or drive, or else it would lunge forward. Let's go ahead and test the cranking. So like I said, when I put the key in and turn it to the on mode, you can see it thinks it's in neutral, PRN, on the Prindle thing there. And fun fact, there is the little output shaft on the manual transmission. So I'm going to crank it over with the key here while you guys watch the output shaft on the transmission. Sounds pretty healthy to me. So that is going to conclude this episode. In the next episode, we're going to be fabricating up a rear transmission mount and getting a drive shaft installed. And then I think the fifth and final episode will be clutch pedal and a few other little things to tidy up like that. So I'm going to keep this one nice and short and end it here. Um, if you are enjoying the series, please subscribe to see our other videos about this car and other cars as well. And thanks for watching.